Thank you, Mary. Um, I'm really approaching this um, from a practitioner's point of view. I was the uh, property chairman of a historic uh, building asset for uh, a decade, and we were marching towards a masonry restoration project for that building over most of that decade. And the techniques that you're going to see today were developed to make the information and data developed by conservators and engineers and others more available and accessible by the team of people that were going to work on the building and to create uh, you know, a more permanent record of, of what was done. So we wrapped up yesterday's session with the question, is it science or is it practical and useful? And I think the answer is yes, um, or at least from my uh, perspective. Let's see, figure out where I am here. Um, there's a lot of issues that, that we face, and I know that how many of you have faced some of these, uh, these issues in the projects that you've managed? Uh, you know, solving some of these things are going to require new tools or either old tools to be used in new ways and a more integrated approach to the work at hand. And solving them will lead to, to better and more efficient work in the short term and a better record for the next generation of owners, conservators, preservationists, and historians. So how do we take um, a complex 3D building like this 120-year-old William Halsey Wood design Church of the Ascension in Pittsburgh and translate it into the visual communication tools, namely blueprints, that the architecture, engineering, and construction industry is familiar with? You know, on this particular project, this was the building that I was the property manager for. We had a wonderful 40-page uh, conservator's report on this building, but the information was never going to be used. It was effectively inaccessible due to its text-based format. We needed to convert the data in the report to a more useful information and instructions. So, for example, how do we locate the scope of work or the quantity of linear feet of mortar repointing on a project like this one? How do we provide a more accurate and higher quality information as part of our RFP provided to potential bidders? And you can see here the building's quite complex, a lot of three-dimensionality uh, to it. Uh, so this is the current state of affairs, um, or was the current state of affairs. Hand-measured drawings, um, which may or, or may not be that accurate. Measured drawings are conceptual in nature. They provide little additional information compared to the original construction drawings. And so I was looking for a solution for this building. And, you know, wouldn't you have liked to have had a blueprint like this one uh, with all the surface texture um, for that project? Um, this particular image, these mortar joints that you can see here are in the range of a half inch to an inch in uh, width. Uh, the original images were produced at the four to eight pixel per inch uh, resolution range, uh, which was good enough to produce a 124th scale Arc D 36 inch wide uh, sheet to include in the RFP process for this project in 2008. The more, um, <clears throat> so let's take a little closer look at the, at the process here. Uh, you know, I have to. So there is the original photography being rectified, and uh, we can zoom in and begin to see some other aspects of the building. Then we do the conversion process to the blueprint substitute. Uh, we scale it, we add scope, we put it in the page makeup, and I'll, I'll run that one more time for you so you can see uh, what's going on there. So, uh, let's see here my cursor again. 
Uh, I'm going to show you some other examples now of different, uh, oops, different buildings uh, that we've done different uh, changes. So this is, um, let me figure out which way I'm going here. Where's my, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on both screens at the same time. So we'll just go up to full screen here. And uh, this is an Art D page. Um, and you can see uh, the facade of this robber baron era house in the Pittsburgh region. Uh, we've got quite a bit of uh, information here. You can already see the water uh, plant growth uh, staining here in the upper portions of the building, even at small scale. And as we zoom in a little bit, you can begin to see some of the uh, tooling of the stone. The surface textures are, are different. And um, if we come in here closer, um, you can see uh, the, uh, you can actually read the historic uh, landmark plaque and see the different textures. If we jump up to this uh, crest here above the door, you can see that if we had to reproduce this crest in the case of a natural disaster or loss, uh, we've got pretty good information just uh, from this photograph. and. Uh, we jump up to the upper area. As you can see, the mortar joints are a lot wider up here at the top. So you've got some thermal movement or something else that's happened through the years um, there in that building. So that's just a, you know example of a little bit diff different scale of resolution um, that uh, is available. And uh, I can't see it on that screen, but. All right, so here is a terracotta example. This is the Mellon Institute in Pittsburgh, which is uh, owned by Carnegie Mellon. You can see there, uh, I don't know if the color is really showing up well here, but we got a lot of water staining and green algae uh, here in the corner under this uh, piping. But as we zoom in to the terracotta there, you can see that we were able to extract uh, the full pattern on that terracotta uh, into the blueprint substitute and uh, makes it very useful for, uh, uh, you know, marking up the drawings, uh, determining scope of work. And uh, then, um, I'm sorry, I might have to come back over to the other side here. Where, um, we. Uh, we can accentuate different features of the building depending on how we process the information. So you can see on the left we have more of the mortar joints and on the right we have more of the stone uh, texture. And um, then uh, uh, we can even get a... Um, quad view here, so we, we have um, color and uh, a variety of different uh, um, things here, and you know, we're all moving in comparison. So with this kind of thing, you could do a, a pre-existing uh, conditions or uh, you know, then post-demolition, post-repair, and then you could even monitor uh, the project over, over time. And you can see very different uh, features brought to bear there. And uh, some of our, um, so this is a, a set of records from the Habs uh, collection at the Library of Congress. You might recognize this as the Alamo. And we've got a hand measured drawing with an actual photo of um, the facility here. And so we don't have to go create new data to use some of these tools. Uh, sometimes we can use historic data and come up with uh, 
uh, good information. However, um, we may want to uh, uh, create new information uh, depending on what's going on. So these uh, two photos are taken 70 years uh, apart. And if we look at the capital here on this column, you can see we have a great deal of material loss here in this capital. And um, we have a continued deterioration in this spot here as compared to the, the uh, location 70 years previously. And if you look at this uh, location here, you can see that we have uh, uh, some damage that existed 70 years ago. And we can uh, do very high resolution. Uh, this is uh, gigapixel, gigapixel um, photogrammetry here. Uh, these are multi-image compilations. And you know, that's about at the resolution that we were before on this building. And if we come on in here, um, you can really get right in there and do your visual inspection. You can actually see uh, where they put aluminum flashing here on top of this capital and then it's barged on with some cementitious material here uh, in this place where the edge is not clean. And then we come over and we have the flashing again. And so you can, do, you can have that kind of very high resolution uh, inspection uh, available to your, um, your RFP process and uh, what you know, bidders have available uh, to them. Another particular issue that we deal with often is uh, difficult to access uh, buildings. Uh, I'm about uh, two floors below grade here, uh, looking up this hill at a, an eight to nine story uh, clock tower at the Jefferson County Courthouse in uh, Port Townsend, Washington. And we were able to come in here and document this uh, clock tower and uh, you can you know, just really zoom right in there. You can see some loss of mortar here. And then uh, you can see that there's a chip missing from this stone here. And so we can do fairly high range uh, inspection, even from difficult to access materials. So this should allow your conservator uh, to do some of his inspection from uh, his desk and reduce the field effort to, to validation. Now, all of the, uh, everything I've shown you so far, we, the camera has been fixed in a single point of view. Uh, this particular image is a, what I would call a linear panorama where the camera is marching along uh, a parallel line to the surface of this frieze. And uh, this is probably about uh, 15 columns by three or four rows of, of information here and, you know, we can, jump in here and, and you know we've got pretty pretty good detail here. This was not intended to be a, a super high resolution, but you know if we go along to the other end, um, um, you can see uh, you know we've got we've got good detail here in this in this freeze. Okay. So uh, that, you know that's the, the core uh, tools. Um, then, you know, going a step beyond that, um, oops. Uh, we can then add annotation capability to uh, the system so we can annotate on image. I'll just turn those annotations off for a minute and um, we can um, go to um, uh, different areas and we can jump right in there and if I turn these annotations back on um, you can see here when I mouse over the, the grates on this building um, you'll notice it may be a little difficult to see uh, the original wooden uh, muttons over the glass here are still available uh, above the door and then down here in the lower area we have a new aluminum forcible entry post 9-11 uh, upgrade to the building. Uh, this, this is the uh, Hiram Chittenden locks in um, uh, the Seattle area. And so we have a, a very odd shaped uh, annotation here where we're able to annotate both areas at the same time. We can also put um, forensic information uh, on, on the building. Um, and I'll, 
I'll show you that in another uh, example. So uh, this is, um, again, we have these points of interest that we've created here, and uh, we may have um, uh, different elements of, um, well, I can't quite find it in my list there, uh, but I can just zoom in here. So here we have a, a moisture study that was done at this location. We've color-coded the data points for uh, their information and we can get a pop-up uh, message describing the date and the measurement. And uh, if we click on uh, some of these uh, points, we can drill down to the engineer's report who took the, uh, the data test. Obviously, we can link to any other kind of data. And if you don't like uh, that presentation, we can present it in a graphical format or this could be a repair specification or almost any other kind of information um, that uh, you can basically embed on image. So uh, the, you know, what we're trying to do here, the solution was to try to come up with a suite of tools uh, that could solve um, problems in the, in the construction industry for managing and controlling work. So if you, if you develop the blueprint substitutes and then you have the photometric uh, gigapixel surveys, obviously then you can put your work scope you can have a web discussion, you can bring in uh, outside experts, uh, even overseas folks, uh, through the use of web technology. Uh, you develop your scope and specification, move those back onto your blueprint substitutes, and then that can provide a greater accessibility, better data into the, to the RFP um, you know, process, and of course can provide a historic record also has several other benefits in terms of uh, client websites, public accessibility to features and aspects of the building uh, that might not be uh, viewable from ground level, or uh, you can also uh, generate interest um, in your project, uh, fundraising perhaps, membership um, thing, uh, things like that. And uh, that's how we've seen the tools used in the last uh, four years. The, the benefits to you as conservators and technicians and owners are, are tremendous. Uh, we, we found that uh, we can reduce equipment and manpower in the field to, to validation of existing conditions rather than discovery. So the conservator may spend as much time on visual inspection uh, at his desk um, but we've reduced the need for cherry pickers and repelling and other kinds of things um, in the field to uh, more of a minimum to a validation effort. We provide much greater information to the um, prospective bidders and other people that are interested in working on the project. Risk premiums are uh, reduced and therefore you know, bidding tends to come in a little bit tighter. And um, so that's, um, that's what we've got. We're, these are basically gigapixel photogrammetry uh, with a conversion to um, you know, blueprint substitute so that you get all of that uh, surface texture and then we've coupled that with these other, other tools. So um, I, I think that's really all I have uh, to say about what you might do with it today, but then the advantage of course is you have better records that you can leave to the next generation. And if you need archival material, uh, you can always output the drawing pages to uh, Vellum with uh, some carbon-based inks on your inkjet. So um, theoretically, hopefully, we're, we're solving current problems and leaving the scientific record for the next generation. And if you want to trust digital, well, you can, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs>